What's going on, Spit and Chicklets fans? Biz here. Thanks for tuning in to another interview as part of the ECHL Player Relief Fund interview series. And this one is brought to you by our good pals at Bud Light and especially Bud Light Seltzer. Bud Light Seltzer is low in carbs, low in sugar, and a great option to enjoy responsibly while watching the interview you're about to check out. And in another unquestionably good move, Bud Light Seltzer has generously donated $10,000 to the ECHL Player Relief Fund. Their support is going directly in the pocket out of out of work members of the hockey community who need it most. We know times are not easy right now, so we're trying to give you as much content as we can. So we hope you enjoy this interview and please stay safe. And once again, thank you to Bud Light and Bud Light Seltzer. <laughs> It's been about two and a half years since we had this guy on. He's one of what I call the four horsemen of Twitter when it comes to hockey news. You see him on Sportsnet here in Canada and on the NHL Network back in the States and, of course, on Hockey Night in Canada every Saturday. One of the best hockey reporters in the biz. Welcome back to Spit and Chicklets, Elliot Friedman. Which horseman am I, famine or pestilence? Like, which <laughs> one am I? I, I? I know. I forgot they actually means a bad thing at the end of the day. It sounded cool, but... I wish I could chuckle a lot, yeah. but I have no yeah, idea I, what you guys I just are talking about. Troy when they all sneak in in the horse. Yeah. I know that move. Uh, you, I've seen the four I probably, is that what we're talking about? No, we'll drop it. Busy. <laughs> if I said, I don't think Mount, Mount Rushmore wouldn't have worked for a four Canadian guy. So, uh, oh, okay, um, Elliot. So you have not been on since Biz Biz wasn't on when you came on with RA and I. That's right. Yeah, so we got a new we we it's changed and in that time you've started your own podcast, you and Merrick. That's right. You're one of our boys, Jeff Merrick. So you're in the game now. Yes, we're not as highly ranked as your podcast, oh, but fuck. we still think we're it's different. pretty good. We're different. We are different. You guys There's actually know what you're talking about. You guys, <laughs> we're just fooling a lot more people. <laughs> You know what? It's not what you say. It's how you say it. And that's why this Stephen works. Stephen A. Smith. That's right. That's yeah. right. I think it's a, it's a good counterbalance. You guys are much more informative, analytical. We you know, basically swear and tell like kind of while well, biz tells the stories. But also, like the, this is the key thing, is that the players know that it's not that they think we're out to get them. It's they don't trust us. Like they trust you guys. Like you guys are two of them, and it makes a difference. Yeah, we actually threaten them. We hold them hostage and say, "We know what the fuck was happening behind the scenes." <laughs> That's a lie. You, co you come on, we give we're a connected. fucking power puff interview for you, or we're gonna leak it all, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. No, we just—I uh, don't know. Yeah, we don't. I mean, once again, too, like they, we we allow them to cut anything they want. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's the trust right there. I think. Well, I think it's such a small fraternity of men who played in the NHL. So when they they see each other, it's like they kind of let their guard down just a little bit, you know. You know, it, it is true. Like one one of the things I do believe, Ari, and I don't know if you feel this in, in this particular group here, but there are some guys I've worked with. They're like. You know, hey, I've worked with you for a long time. I, I've known you for a long time. I don't think of you any differently that you didn't play in the NHL. But there are still yeah. some guys I've been around. It's always them and you. And there's not too many of them, mm. but the two, the, the two or three that are like that are really like that. It's funny. There's been very small percentage, and you, when you know it, you fucking know it. Like, yes. You're like, okay, all right, it's, it's I, obvious. I don't want to stroke you off here with too much fucking can I rant, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I would, if you said something on Twitter, if I was opposed to it, it would make me like rethink what I was thinking. Like that's how much respect I have for you as far as your, even your opinion is concerned. And it, it takes a lot of time to get to that level where you can even be considered that. Wow, we must be following the different people on Twitter because I got people who tell me what an idiot I am all well, the time. I mean, yeah. Oh, you, yeah, you please no one, <laughs> right? I mean, they, they, every team thinks that you don't like their, their guys, right? Yes, everybody thinks you hate their team, but it's fine. Like, that part of it is mostly fun. Like, yeah. I, like the thing is, if we didn't. If it wasn't for those people, like none of us would be working, right? Yes. Like the, true. The, the crazed hockey fan is why <laughs> yeah. we all have jobs. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because they're point. bananas for the sport. I'll be your punching bag. That's right. Come on, yeah. Tell me. I'll let you throw. We should. <laughs> Did the check clear? Okay, hit yeah. me again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so we're coming off um, a crazy deadline, mm -hmm. and it was it, leading up to it. It was funny, like Duffy, and you saw a bunch of other guys tweeting. Well, we're not really doing a show anymore, are we? Everything's done, but. Did you have any clue it would be that crazy? No, no, I, I didn't. Really? Think, waking up? I didn't think it would be, like, I was just hoping it wouldn't be like last year. Last year, we basically sat around all day. 
There were a couple of small deals, and then we knew Mark Stone was probably getting traded to Vegas, but it didn't happen until like 250. So yeah. you're sitting there all day waiting for this big move to happen. This one, at least there was stuff going on all day. Yeah, all all day. day. So th- there was stuff to keep. And some of it was big. Trocheck happened pretty early. So um, at least there was stuff to talk about all day. It wasn't as bad but as last year. But it turns into a joke, though, right? Because you guys are just killing time up there. And there's, like, sympathy for it. And there's even a build-up joke going on, correct? Yeah, but it was, like I said, this year, it wasn't that bad because there yeah. was stuff coming on. Plus, we had you guys to come on. And I like the that video. Of the well, that's why I'm getting scene. cut off now. It's like, oh, now we actually got shit to do. So fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to tell you, that was a great hit. It was about one. We were joking. It was about one minute away from going really sideways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you said Bronze. Yeah. I go, Bronze hasn't played a big part for Edmonton this year. And somebody's like, yo, he's retired. <laughs> I swear to God. I knew that. I swear I knew it. When I saw his name, I was like, I totally forgot he was still on the roster. That's basically what happened to me. We're not making fun fun of the the guy. I was just like, that's on us. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, go ahead. What what deal on uh, on that day or even the days leading up to the trade deadline? What was the biggest head scratch to you? Like, what, you know, why did that go? Why why did that guy go there? At the beginning, it was Trocek. Okay. Because, you know, we heard, we'd reported that we heard he was available. But when. Like, I'll tell you, when we reported that Carolina was in and it was getting close, RA, I, I had people in the league on teams texting me saying, you got to be wrong about that. Like, there's no logical reason for him to be going to Carolina. And then some people started texting me saying, you think it's a three-way deal because there's no point in Carolina having him. So, I, like, first, when, when people in the league are texting you saying, are you sure or that doesn't make any sense, that tells you that that caught a lot of people by surprise. Okay. Is, is, is Carolina not insane how they trade? They will do – they they make the, a lot of um, bold moves. They do, yes, they do, and they have a certain way of thinking. Like their front office is structured a little bit differently. There, like the owner's very involved. Um, their top analytics guy is very involved, and he's got and he's got a big say. He's got a very big say there, okay. and, and that guy's smart. But fuck, they keep winning, though. Well, you know what I think. Uh, you know what I think. They, uh, I think Brenda Moore is oh, yeah. a huge part of that. Um, you is know, there is there any type of conflict there? I don't think it's conflict, but I think everybody in that organization, like when, when Dundon got in there as the owner, he came in like a bull in a china shop. He was ridiculous. Like he was he wa- he was unafraid yes. to make change. He wouldn't pay the scout cell phone bills. He's there was there was a lot of stuff like they that. They fired the the one of the broadcasters. He'd been doing it forever. Chuck Caton because oh. he didn't see the value. And he was unbelievable. And also he felt that executives in the NHL made way Way too much money so he he said that the people are going to work for us it's not going to be the same like i'll tell you the the one of the big stories is brendan moore's contracts coming up and it'll be interesting he should to take see. him to the cleaner well it'll be interesting to see like he like oh you, i don't I, I think they're going to undervalue him and i bet you they lose him well we'll see we'll Cause, see because that's the one divide where like there still has to be a hockey mind somewhere and for, for somebody, as much as they're turning around guys who have impact in the lineup, he's somehow able to get them and able to make them buy in early and quick. Because there has been some turnover. Like, If you guys were to, were to take a poll of every NHL player and say, which coach would you most want to play for in the league right now? How low do you think he would finish? He's right there. He, I bet you he wouldn't be lower than. I, I bet you he might not be lower than second. He's that highly regarded by the players in the league. Yeah, he's just fair. He's going to look well, you in the eye and tell you exactly what he thinks, and he's like, "Hey," and, and probably oh, most of the time, give him benefit of the doubt. And, and if you can deliver, then you've earned his trust. Well, he's just like he's got that mentality still, right? Yeah, he understands and he he recognizes that everybody's got a job and every job is important and here's your role and I'm going to make you feel important on this team. And you guys talked about uh, with certain players kind of maybe not respecting a guy as much in the media who hadn't played. Well, look at look at what Rob Brindamore did as a player yeah. too. So if you're a young kid coming in, it's not a coach everyone respects just cuz of how brilliant he is, you know, hockey mind wise. Go look at his career. Go look at game 7 when he won it against Edmonton. I mean, this guy has done it. 
before as a player, and now he's doing. He's it got some fire to him too. Eh? Like he's a. Unit. They used to lock him out of the weight room. Apparently, at Michigan <laughs> that State. That is true. No joke. You know, and here's the other thing too. And and you guys can talk to this. I've had guys tell me before that the fact that the coach is still disciplined enough to be in good shape, and he's in killer shape, it resonates with the players. Well, th- not only that, no but the. So the the Coming mental capacity body. of doing it yes takes so much energy away from you. I can understand why these old players who do that just like they're like fuck. They got beer guts on them. They're like oh I just can't get up. I'm 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 fucking not going to the weight room today. I, mean, I I had a player tell me once, Biz, that he thinks that I would be a little bit more respected if I was in better shape because players rep- re- respect people who are in hit good the shape. weight room, Elliot. I, uh, I, that actually that's why I'm in a media, that, Elliot. Come on, <laughs> that that actually uh, forced me to doing like I think three push-ups. Uh, was that Dallas Eakins? Because he kicked out all your donuts and stuff when he got that job in Edmonton. I wasn't in Edmonton yeah. at the time. I would have carved them with the rest of them for throwing up. But I, I thought that was interesting. I said it was a good conversation. I go, what do you mean by that? And he says, I think athletes respect people who are in better condition because we are forced to be in good condition. I just thought that was interesting. I mean, I, yeah. I, maybe maybe psychologically, I don't even know that I'm doing it, mm-hmm. right? But I don't know, but I would say no, not me. Don't tell. Well, don't, obviously don't. not. <laughs> you yeah. gotta be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like body shaming already oh, no, <laughs> behind no, the shit. scenes and shit. Oh, shit. I want to bring up one other name from the trade deadline. Joey yeah. Thornton. Uh, he wanted to get moved. Was yeah. it a situation of the price being too high or a lack of interest from contenders? I don't think that. Like you know, RA people were saying Boston. I heard Boston wasn't in it. Well, because like I said, where are you gonna put him with that lineup? I mean, I know it sounds so weird with Joe Thornton Hall of Fame, but he's a center and. They they got four centers right now. And it's a cap hit. And people also told me Dallas, but I heard Dallas was, they looked, but they weren't as in it as people were. I'll tell you this. I wonder if the one of the things I kind of heard, and I got to do more work on it, is, you know, Marlowe's fast. You can plug him into any lineup anywhere. Obviously, Thornton's not fast. He's still incredibly skilled. He's incredibly smart. But I wonder if he's almost got to pick a contender at the start of next year and say, I'm starting there and I'm going there right from the beginning. Because that's that might be a better fit for him. For, and Doug Wilson minimum. Like does he right? I and, mean, and he'll do it. Like he wants to win. Doug Wilson apparently told teams, Don't even talk to me if you're not a contender. Which I mean in today's NHL, though, I mean, like, there's like, okay, I guess you could say there's like four or five teams who are up there who you would consider that. But I think with the parity now, if the right team, like, and considering the grind of the season, it's really who's staying the healthiest. Yeah. Like, if, if Kemper stays healthy for the Coyotes, and I know I, people oh, are going to. No, but I'm saying it's like, he's coming back. Like, what if they go on a little streak and he gets hot? Like, he, it, it, it's anyone's game. It is. I, I do In think, for East. example, I think Toronto had interest. And I, I think that they will pitch to him about coming next year if he wants to. They, they, they need that. Yes. They need that in the locker room. Pay him what you can. A hundred percent. And but the problem with this is apparently like Toronto this year, they're looking at it. They you know, I mean they kind of came off a night where they lost to the Zamboni driver and they were thinking we're not we're not getting through Tampa and Boston. And I think San Jose would have thought the right. same thing. So uh, but I, I'm curious next year if he but he's gotta wanna leave San Jose and I don't know if he does. I, I agree with you in the sense where some teams are getting a little bit silly too early with their core group where it's like, whoa, like I don't think you're even in that realm yet and you're giving up assets that could maybe help you get there. Mm-hmm. Who do you think who which teams do you think have been a bit too aggressive and overvaluing what they might have right now? I say Vancouver and I get I might start getting hammered. But they just keep dummying you. <laughs> you know, you know, here's what it is. There, there there's two teams that go for it, Paul. There's the teams that think they can win, and there's the teams like Vancouver. They haven't been in the playoffs in four years. Okay, they. When was the last time they won a playoff series? 2011. Right. Like look, look at Arizona. Like people made fun of Arizona for making the Taylor Hall trade this year. They haven't been in the playoffs right. since they just 2012. Want the, the fever to, yeah. It's, it's, sometimes it's the you fever. Got, like, yep. if people were ripping Columbus last I year. Know. I totally got it. Yep. At some point in time, you have to say there's a reward for being our fan. Yep. Yeah. And you know Vancouver. And look what it's done there. Yeah. I agree. Fa- Vancouver, and also Vancouver knows that what are they going to have to pay Pedersen next year? Like nine Close, a year, ten a year, nine ten a year. 
the way it's going for Quinn Hughes, what are they going to have to pay that Ooh, guy? 14 a year? <laughs> this is unreal. You know, so sometimes, no, they're just going to give him the team. <laughs> he's going to yeah, exactly. have partial he ownership. Gets the ro- he gets the Roxies <laughs> as a signing bonus. So, yeah, yeah. so that's the thing. Land like, and stories. you got to take your chance. Sometimes you got to say to your fans, this is. it's not – we're not necessarily the best team, but this is our time, and this is when we take our shot. Yeah, and I support that. They're horny for a winner. They're close to it, and it's like you know, let's let's do this. Let's give our fans. Our division's not that good. We're playing pretty well. Let's give our fans a reward. Let's give it a shot. Um, so this pretty much leads off. I mean, this is uh, spring training. I would say right after the deadline, you you got to get get in a good rhythm before playoffs is every night. Yeah. How many nights? It's it's basically Last two and a half. Last year, mo- I think we counted. I think somebody told me, and if it's wrong, you can tell me. Uh, someone out there oh, will tell they me. Will. Oh, yeah. It was something like 62 nights in a row, something like that. Um, Just a grind. I mean, are you exhausted at the end of it? Is it... It's it, the, the the killer is when like you're thinking, OK, all these series are going to end and then like one goes to seven yeah. and then there's a one the next day. I mean, it's fantastic. It's the best hockey of the year. Um, but uh, the, there are points in it where you're like, oh, my God, I could really use a night off. Like, yeah. what am I going to say tonight? Because every yes. night the toughest thing is the 30 minute pregame show. Okay, what, what do you want to about? talk about in yeah. the pregame? I'm like, oh my god, I have yeah. no idea. Yeah, can you throw 19 commercials in <laughs> this pregame right. show, that's please? Right. That's right. <laughs> but it's, you know, it, I mean, you guys know playoffs. It's the best time of the year. It's the, it's rush. the best time of the year. It's yeah, it's not. One other name too uh, from the deadline. I thought he would have ended up elsewhere. I guess. Uh, uh, Tommy Fitz didn't have the same attitude as Doug Wilson. Wayne Simmons ends up in Buffalo. I think because he's such a well-respected veteran, people are kind of maybe hoping he ended up somewhere else. Buffalo's not in the playoffs quite yet. Like when Kevin BX just said you have to have more respect for him than sending him to Buffalo? <laughs> Basically, he said, okay. <laughs> well, here's what I think is going on in RA. It's really negative in Buffalo right oh. now. It's, it's, fans are pissed off. Um, Dwayne, you know, shout the, out. The organization is upset. Like, it's 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 nasty. It's awful. They're in quicksand right now. They're in quicksand, and they knew they were trading Rodriguez because he asked for a trade earlier in the year. I I don't know if Sherry asked for a trade, but he kind of made it clear he wanted to go if he could. Both those guys need new contracts, so there there's two guys going out. You got Cahoon coming in. You you need one more guy, and they wanted somebody with a good attitude. And I heard New Jersey told teams we're not trading Wayne Simmons unless it's a good setup for him. Because he didn't like being a rental last year. It didn't work for him in Nashville. So apparently they Buffalo and Fitzgerald and Botterill worked together in Pittsburgh. I guess they talked to each other about it and they said, look, he's going to come here. He's going to play a lot. We're going to put him in a good position. He needs a new contract. Yeah. And they, we'll they, show and they presented yeah. this too. They presented this to Simmons and he said, okay. Okay. So I, I hope I, he gets paid And, you know, too. Buffalo's trying for a miracle run. They probably won't get in. I thought they played really hard the other night in Colorado, but they lost. They just need – positive mm-hmm. and and you guys know Simmons he'll bring the right attitude yeah. and and I, I hope I mean I'm biased but I really hope it's not a quick thing with Ralph Kruger you no. got to give him you got to give him a couple years here I'll tell you I'll tell you the big question there Ryan is is his future in that organization going to be coaching or is he going to be managing or yeah, president of hockey higher. ops I think that's a question they're smart all a smart man there. One subject, I'm surprised we have gone this long without talking about it, the e-bug situation. We talked about it a little before we started. Uh, it wasn't a problem, really. I mean, uh, what's his name? Foster, the kid Foster out in Chicago, yeah. played a couple of years ago, and everyone liked it. Now it happens to the Leafs. The Leafs lose, and now the GMs want to discuss this rule, and everybody wants to change it. What, what's your take on this whole thing? Well, I think you have to understand. Like, just, we, I was working in the studio that night when that happened, and you know, it's, it's 3-1 when he comes in and they score. And then the Leafs start scoring, okay? And it's 4-3. And, I mean, you should have seen the text I was getting, R.A., from, like, owners and people like that. <laughs> like, this is a freaking joke. Um, how can bad. a Leaf employee be sabotaging the Hurricanes like this? Like, there's so much money on the line in this game in terms of, you know, what happens if you miss the playoffs? How much do you yeah. lose? The guy's 42 years old. Like, this is embarrassing. It's ridiculous. All right, I can't tell you, and I know you and me are one thing in common. We both like to gamble. <laughs> I know a lot of guys that lost a lot of money in that second intermission. Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I went. I got <laughs> murdered. I went. Like, uh, like they were going on to the bet sites. The live bets. Oh, and yeah. And they were, they were dropping. Like, like I knew guys, like, forget the money line. They were doing Leafs minus a goal and a half. Oh, they I thought, had it all out there. I had them all. <laughs> <laughs> they had third period, money line, yeah, puck line. That's, so, <laughs> that's why I'm glad I don't gamble. So then... So then, as the as the as the things change and Carolina start to pull away, the same people are texting me like, "Leafs are a joke. <laughs> this is still a risk. I mean, what a great story, even though I'm not crazy about it. But like, the thing is, like, it just shows you how fine the line is because the result is good. We're, what a great story! He's on Colbert. He's on the Today Show. Yeah, it's crazy. They're, they're making him the guy of the day in Carolina. But if if they lose, what's everybody saying this week? Oh, for sure, this league is a disgrace. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. like so, in, in, in a sense, the league should be fucking paying them more because <laughs> they save them. They save their, them. They save their, God their ass. You know what that said to a lot about was the Hurricanes as players. Oh man, they, they could have totally folded. That's and, and that goes right back to what we were talking about earlier. Yes, their head fucking coach. And Brendan Moore gave a he was that was a pretty cool little speech after. Well, the best was when he came on the ice. All the guys are laughing, and Brendan Moore's like, "This is terrible." Like you can see, he's yeah. so unhappy. Yeah. So a couple years ago, at one of the GM meetings, they talked about should every team have to hire a guy who recently played either junior or college or some level sure. of pro, and he works as like a coach or a video coordinator or something, and he always has to travel with the team. Yeah. So you always have like a decent third goalie. It's going to happen now. Well, I don't know about that because the team said, like, who's going to pay for that? Well, that, exactly. So Toronto Maple Leafs, <laughs> they, they, they make all that money. They pay for everybody. You lost. You're going to pay. I talked to Shanahan. He said it was cool. Yeah, just roll the card. Yeah, yeah, he, 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 he said he, he wants, signed the check. He wants the air miles, though. That's, that's right. He wants the wants. air miles. See, you can save for hotel rooms later <laughs> in the year. But like, that's the thing. Like, who's going to pay for that? Now, Brian Burke suggested the Players Association create a guy in every city. Like for example, like in Toronto, you're going to have 300 guys who could be that guy. In a place like Raleigh or, or, or Nashville, maybe you move a guy there who's that guy. I don't know. But the fact is, at the very least... I, I know how we're going to pay for it. Oh, what's that? Well, gambling's becoming legal, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought you were going to say like you, edible you, 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 sales. You, you, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we could do that too, Elliot. We could collab that. Mm -hmm. um, you would have gambling on who thinks the first e-bug is going to get to the net, and then you collect and pay them with, the, with all the losers. With the wings, money. that's right. And then and then you can bet on like uh, save percentage when they actually end up getting in there. And you could sell sponsorship on that jersey. It just so happens if that goalie enters the game, the logo of the team who paid for the or the advertiser who paid for the logo on the front of it gets to keep it and they get center stage. Look how much airtime air has got. That's true. Huh? You know? That how much money in advertising would that have been? Five million. I, I wish you would suggest that to Berkey when he was here because he doesn't believe they should advertise on the jerseys. He might have had a heart attack right <laughs> in his chair. Okay, so we, we got to let everyone know we, this is the same day we interviewed Brian Burke. So uh, <laughs> if we've been talking about the e bug and all these interviews recently, it's because it just happened and uh, it's created some drama. Yeah, it's been a fun topic too. You know? Absolutely, oh, it's a great topic. But I, I think one thing you will see, RA, is I, I think they will say. You know, there's got maybe like an age limit. Um, I don't know because there's there's no 42 year old goalies for a reason. Well, that's funny because everyone's <laughs> bringing up his age and he and he won the game. Yeah. Like that, that's what I kind of find ironic. But that's a win for the old guys. Yeah, yeah you can't be going out. against the age category because that could be offending people. <laughs> that's nowadays, right, federal right? offense. So, that's yeah. Right. yeah, come on, man. <laughs> so trade day, man. How, how, your phone just must not stop. Now, do you get guys feeding you bullshit at all? Like, or do you suspect it is? Like, I, or do you have a pretty good rapport with the guys you your sources? I guess. Well, pretty good. Um, you know, there's there's always stuff you always try to double check things like on that day the worst thing you can do is be wrong oh, yeah. oh, yeah. people freaking let you have know a, they don't they're forget. waiting maybe um most people on that day are pretty good because they know it's high pressure high energy but like i said with that tro check one when i first got i was like that's got that's got to be wrong so you you need to find someone else who will tell you it's true but there's you'll get a lot of people saying like you know what are you hearing on this what do you like even teams will say i've had teams before say do you hear anyone else on this guy because i think they're trying to determine if someone's trying to fleece them and saying they've got another offer or it's not yeah. true I, I try to be careful with that stuff because yeah. you don't want to be seen as like a, a spy, double agent double or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, it's, but, it, but it's kind of silly in the meantime because like has there ever been people where they've given you one, it was wrong, and then they're kind of like, oh, motherfucker. 
And then like maybe they give you another one. You go, are you sure? And then you do it and then they're wrong again. Have you ever had to like be cut someone off and say, hey, you're no longer my scoop fry, bro? <laughs> well, I'll say this. I always believe, Paul, if if, it's, if I screwed up, it's my fault. Like it's I could have tested the information. Accountability is nice. But uh, so I never like to blame anybody else. But uh, there have been times like there's certain guys who if they send you something, it's gold. It yeah. is gold. Yeah. There's 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 a few people in the league. It's gold. Willy Wonka but, chocolate bar. <laughs> yeah, it's the Willy Wonka <laughs> chocolate ticket. But there's some people who will send me something, and I'll look like, uh, uh, I better check this one. out. I don't know about this. Oh, I better check this one out. Yeah, some of them. The, I mean, I know the old three source rule they taught in journalism school. Sometimes it just doesn't work sometimes in that field. Well, and, Twitter's changed everything, right? Yeah. Like, um, but you you always try to double check if you can. Now I have Ari. One thing I do try and do if I can is. I send a heads up to the GMs and the PR guys of the teams involved. I'll say, hey, I'll let you know I got this coming. And if they're. So they can get ahead of it a little bit. So just so they know. Yeah. I, if I can't, I like to warm. And, and, and if there's no pressure on the, like a non deadline day, I'll wait for a response. If I have any reason to believe anybody else is chasing it, you can't wait for a response. But on deadline day, it's it's like it's no holds barred. It's right. like you, <laughs> you have if you're sure matches. you're just yeah, going, yeah, yeah. and they all understand Royal that Rumble. Too. Yeah, but hey. like I will, I really because I know that uh, the the teams, the agents, the players. If you can give them a heads up that you know something, they it pays off in the long run. Huh, if you can, do you have a an example of? Maybe letting somebody know that you got something that's coming, and and the guy's like, "How the fuck did you get that?" Like he was. Oh yeah, there there was like, one. trade. There was one trade. I'll tell you a story with uh, that. You, you, this is why I always keep everybody so quiet. But there was one trade last year. And I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say the the two teams involved. But I got the tip, and somebody said you better get it out because I think there's other guys who are gonna know about it. So what I did was I texted the two GMs and two of their PR people. So it was on one text. And usually I try to send it just team for team, but this time I didn't want to gather. And one of the GMs wrote back, this is unacceptable. And uh, and and he didn't talk like to me. Like the group chat was yeah. unacceptable? <laughs> no, no, like this, that I had the trade, oh, okay. it was unacceptable. Well, maybe he was pissed off with the group text. No, 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 no I don't think it was the group text. I don't <laughs> think it was the group text. Did you really clarify? <laughs> <laughs> so the other, the other GM called me later. The other GM called me later and, and like he was gonna like they, they don't confirm these things. They 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 generally keep quiet. But he actually joked that he was gonna write on it, Oh, good work, Elliot, just to get the other GM even angrier, <laughs> but he wasn't he decided not to do that. But <laughs> that one was McGruff. Like I, I've like in like I, I don't I, I try to keep that stuff out of the public, but there are definitely some relationships with guys that have suffered because of stuff yeah. I found. I want to know who what? the GM who hates uh, group Texas. <laughs> I got to <laughs> know. Berkey. Maybe, maybe off Berkey. maybe off mic. Um, what I'll tell you like the story that really changed the way I protect people was there was one week where I had a player who I got along with really well and he was he came to visit Toronto and he blew me off in the dressing room. And I was like Okay. Uh, like blatantly looked at you and walked away. Yeah, like I yeah. went to go say hi and he walked away from me. And uh, someone else saw it and he goes, what did you say about that guy? I go, I don't know. Like, I don't. And he was a guy I got along with really well. And uh, so I was like, holy smokes. And I couldn't figure it out. And a couple of days later, I get a phone call. He calls me. He says, look, I, I'm really sorry about that, but I got to explain something. And I'm like, okay, what happened? He goes, well, uh, you, so I got called into my GM's office and uh, he pulled out your blog, 31 Thoughts. And he said, here you were this date and you're quoted uh, in the blog. And about two weeks later, I had some information on the team that the GM didn't like that was out there. And he said, well, obviously you're friendly with Elliot. You're quoted at length here. Are you the source for this? That's unfair. And he was like, uh, no, but it really rattled him. And when he told me it rattled me, it was like, you know, people try to figure out who tells. So uh, I really protect, I really try to protect guys a lot. Like I never tell anybody who I talk to. And I, you never reveal because you, people off. try to yeah, find out job, about but, it. But, yeah. But why did he big time you show if anyone was looking yes oh like, so the well, fake the fake in, big time. in new jersey at the practice facility 
um, you know, guys would come out and they'd be, I'd say hi, and they'd look up because there was the camera there, and they knew Lou Lamarillo was watching. Oh, they didn't Lou, want, like, he's like they Robert didn't De Niro and fucking Zeno. <laughs> any, they didn't want anyone to see that he was talking. That they were talking to me. It was pretty funny. Um, I mean, like, I'll ask you about him. Like, is he known as like a, a difficult guy to work with, or is it kind of like? Does he not even see you as someone he's really working with? No, I, I, he's actually excellent. He's okay. uh, he's very professional. Uh, if you call him and ask to talk to him, he will almost always return your call. Okay. Uh, I'll ask him, like on the deadline day, I was working on that. Uh, but I, I had I was working on the Peugeot deal. I heard he was going to the Islanders, and I wrote him a note. It was like it was like. I was pretty sure he was going to New York, but I didn't nail it down like 100%. So I actually texted him. I said, I know how much you love these texts, but I figure I'd just ask. I never got a response. And there have been times I asked him questions like that. He goes, why would you even ask me the question? <laughs> but other than that, if you talk about hockey or his team or other things like that, um, always. He always returns call and always gives you a good answer. And when he ran the Devils, I remember covering that team guys always talked like they were they were always available we always had a chance to talk to them so it just doesn't feed you any rumors or anything you don't want to know um so i was really surprised when i saw the the conor mcdavid documentary yeah oh, basically what happened the whole story it was yep. shocking to to kind of under see that there was a chance he would, he would never be the same did people have that around here? Because it, I couldn't believe something like that would stay quiet all summer. And that's out of respect for somebody's health? Or do you actually not know if anyone even knew what was going on? No, there were a lot of rumors it was really okay. bad. Like, um, So last year um, in the playoffs, we got a tip that he was going for a second opinion because it was worse than the Oilers initially thought it was. And I remember um, the Oilers just would not help on this one. Yeah. And that, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wasn't even mad. Like yeah, I understood. Different. Well, that's fuck, they wouldn't even tell the, the, the guy who was coming in as new GM. <laughs> that's right. Like that's, <laughs> that's pretty tight lipped. <laughs> they, they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't help, but I got it. And the agent really wouldn't help. But when I spoke to him, Jeff Jackson, he was obviously not pleased that we knew about it. So we reported it during one of the playoff games, and I heard that there were certain people in McDavid's family who were very angry it got out. So they locked it down even more. Like, I didn't know they actually went for a third opinion till I heard about the documentary. Like, that's how much they locked it down. And the other thing that happens, Ryan, is that it's the summer, so we're not, a lot of us, we, like... You're our taking our, time our off. deal is yeah. pretty simple. From Labor Day to Canada Day, yeah, I'm, I'm on call. So the thing that Rogers You must get wrecked when that's easy. <laughs> so so Rogers is good about in the summer, you don't have to do anything. So and, and plus yeah. like I, I'd like to be married still and not get the fifty percent escrow. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to you yeah. have to pay attention to your wife. Seriously. So I, a lot of us aren't following as much, but there were rumors in the summer it was really bad. But um, they obviously never could, but McDavid, yeah. first of all, was determined to make it work. And they, you know, I think that shows how much the NHL is changing. Like 10 years ago, would there have been a documentary on a player like that? No. There's only one I know of. Steve Eiserman did one with the cooperation of the Red Wings after 2002, where he basically won a gold medal on a Stanley Cup on one leg. And I think they wanted to talk about his surgery because it was revolutionary at the time. Other than that, I don't know anyone who's done it, and that's where we're going. Uh, that was the finals I got to attend because they bring the top five. Oh, like, 2002 was your draft. Yeah, right. It was myself, Upshaw, Leupold, Bowmeister, and Rick Nash, I think. Or Either way, it was um, we went down and got to meet the teams like after pregame <laughs> skate. Eisman didn't skate. He was sitting there. I've never seen somebody's leg look like so mangled. Ice everywhere. He was limping around like an old man and then he was getting shot up for the games and they won it that year that was this, it, they dominated Carolina and I just remember thinking like oh my god this is what this guy's going through and you're feeling great as a young as a young guy I just that just reminded me of that story Sean Avery I think said on your podcast it was the most incredible thing he'd seen yeah was that Iserman that year 
That was that Paul Maurice team, right? Carolina. Yeah. Was his first time in the cup. Yeah, he yeah. must have been young then. Yeah, he was like 28 when he was the first time he was head coach. I yeah, I don't know if he was he was 28, but he looked 58. Yeah, That's what yeah. coaching does to you. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask, are there any teams that don't speak to uh, any executives that, you know, yes, on the there are, list? There are, there are some. There really? are some oh, guys who really. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to name really? the team. No, I, I wouldn't. Oh, I wouldn't. Yeah. But there are some guys. and They just don't like you? Oh, well, they, they hate that I get information, right? So, like one of the one of the GMs who I got along with the best. It's like, it's like you're in the mob or something. I know it's like, <laughs> you're like one uh, of the yeah, GMs I got along with, with the best. Belly and shit. <laughs> he says that the worst thing about it is what you do to our dressing room. Like he says, especially in the social media era. Oh, like the players are always on Twitter. Like especially around the deadline. Like okay. uh, Troy Stetcher in Vancouver talked about how one of his buddies fell for a fake Twitter account last week <laughs> that he'd been traded. So he says, like, you don't realize the effect that what you do and the social media has on our rooms. And that's what they hate. Fair so enough. when something gets out that they can't control, and it's, if it's bad, if it's false, it's it's bad. But even if it's true, yeah. it's bad. <laughs> I would say so there all, are some guys who get really upset. That's about always it. been out there, though. It's just the new form of it. Yes. I mean, it's always been it was always in the papers before, and everyone always read the papers. Now it's just, you But know. you could insulate yourself a bit more back then. It's yeah. harder. And the other thing, too, is it's, all right, and... It's always harder on the wives or the parents. Yes. Right, right, yeah. Like there, there was one player. I tell this story. There was one time I was asked to speak to a bunch of young players, and they talked about advice. And I said, and one story I told was at the NHL um, media event a few years ago. I walked by one particular player, and I said, uh, "Hey, how you doing?" And he goes, "I know what you guys say about me on TV." And I was like, "What?" The fuck? <laughs> I was like, "A player said yeah, that." Yeah, I go, I go, what? What I say? And I, that's the first thing I was, I was like, "What did I say?" Because I could have said something. <laughs> and uh, he goes, I, "I," he goes, "My family tells me what you guys say about me." And I said, "Stop right there." I said, "Look, I, I don't like to tell anybody what to do because I don't like anybody telling me what to do." But you cannot let your family say to you, this is what's said on TV. Because I guarantee you they're making it 20 times worse oh, for sure, than dude. what was actually said. Like very rarely is it as bad as the family makes it out. So I told him, you have, and the other thing I said to him was, I said, I said, like, why do you, I said, why do you care? Like, I said, how much money are you making this year? And he was in the very high end of the millions. And I go, you know, you got a good social life? He goes, oh, yeah, I had a great social life. I said, what do you do for a living? He looks at me. He goes, what do you mean? I go, what do you do for a living? He goes, I play hockey. I go, do you like to play hockey? He goes, it's the best. So I said, let me get this straight. You're playing hockey. You're making millions. You could date anybody who you want to date. And you're worried about what we're saying about you on television. Yeah. Like, what's wrong with this picture? Fair enough. And he came up to me later in the year and he said, you know, like, wow, like that was that was really good for me to hear. But I, I just, you know, I, I think that's the thing. There's guys probably get guys mad. who listen to this podcast who will hear you say that and it'll change their whole mind. Well, I, you know what? Like, I, like, Biz, you and I have talked about this. Like when I got to Hockey Night in Canada, um, I noticed that I was getting praised or ripped in like newspaper columns more than I ever had been. Yeah. And I was like. This is weird. Like all of a sudden, people are really paying attention. Yeah. And someone said to me, I, for the life of me, I can't remember who it was. They said, "You're on Hockey Night in Canada now. Like everybody's watching what you're doing. So you guys here, you've created a monster. Everybody's watching what you guys are doing. So you're going to get more praise and criticism than ever. So you've got to limit the amount of people you really pay attention to. Talk. I, I tell this to young uh, students now." male female whatever you know i say that all people come after you on twitter it shouldn't happen but it does okay it gets very personal it shouldn't happen but it does you're gonna have to live with it yeah, yeah especially the bigger you get so i always say have a small group like pick the people who really matter oh, to sure. you and you listen to them yeah, the yeah. women get it way worse too, oh, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, like, and and, and like the thing is, I, like I've spoken to, I, I saw a story in the Washington Post about what social media does to young girls in particular. Yeah, and it's brutal. Yeah, it's awful. But I told them, I said, guys, like, it's not right, it's not fair, but unfortunately, it it's is the way happen. it is. So, are you gonna let those losers beat you? And I tell oh, that never. to young... They're the reason I wake up in the morning. <laughs> That's a great... Life. I tell I that to young everyone. men and women it, it, all the time. So you don't sugarcoat it, man. Yeah. You know? Social media has made it 
where when I when, when I was growing up, if a kid didn't get invited to the birthday party, he he didn't see it all over every single kid's Instagram and Facebook or whatever it yeah. is. Tick. So now you know when you're not like including things, but when you talk about guys who basically let the media affect them it, 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 a lot of so so kids grow up they're the star player for the most part when you can make the nhl that's like the common denominator is that kids are really good the whole way up you're never there's no one ever like talking any any uh, no, nothing bad is said about you you're just dominating everyone you've never dealt with adversity to which there's like bad things being said about you as a player or you as a person and so you're not able to handle it when you're just your whole life everything's been sugarcoated so i think that the quicker you can understand i always tell biz like you're always gonna you're never gonna please everyone it's it's right. actually impossible mm -hmm. i swear because i ended up getting tortured so bad in edmonton that it helps me get when you occasionally get ripped now on, on social media and the other thing is that people don't say it to your face no these people maybe some of them would the very rare few but all these people who write stuff to you they if they met you they'd be like, can i get a picture yeah paul it's so it's it's this phony like oh what? yeah i'm just saying as i like to attack it head on where i'm sure uh, yeah you do i'm sure do. some of the media members are like holy shit i remember is this guy crazy i'm like when i saw you do that dude, I someone like, comes at Whoa. me i'm just gonna be like fuck you <laughs> yeah, bitch I, I respect the hell out of that what's that i remember i remember the first time i saw you do it i was like is this for real? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I don't give a fuck. Like, I actually I, sent you a note. I said, "Are you sure you want to do this?" And, he, and you, you said, "You said, oh, this is me." And I'm like, "Okay, if that's you, that's you." And I'm not apologetic like, for it. I'm not. Well, <laughs> now, not now me. it's to the point. Now I've been able to like, like self-made. Like we can do the podcast, and, and obviously my boss is down with how I operate because mm -hmm. he's he, he's pretty much at the extreme level of that. I, I wouldn't say I'm exactly where he is, but. I, I think I'm on the right side of shit. If you want to come at me for my thinking, I'll, I'm going to tell you to go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. Elliot, I got to bring this up. Every time we have you on or I'm looking you up, I have to Google your name. Have you ever met another Elliot who spells the name exactly the way you do? No. Two L's, two T's, and then two E's. No. Somebody once said, that's going to be your legacy. A bunch of kids spelling Elliot like that. I go, wow, that's a great legacy. I can't wait till that's on my tombstone. Just adding <laughs> letters, <laughs> making uniforms more expensive. No, I've never... <laughs> Day by I've day, I've never seen that. No, never. Oh, that, once. I mean, it makes it a unique. It's different. Thing, you know? It's unique. That's for Definitely. sure. Yeah, we already were talking about the Islanders, but Biz and I were chatting one day. He he brought up maybe some sort of thing with Barzal, Barzal and um, Trots and whatever. People gave him shit, and then he ends up getting benched a couple months later. But so many people want to know, like that contract this summer, they can't lose him, right? And no. and he's going to want a lot of money. Well, I do believe. The offer sheets will come. Okay. Really? Thank yes. you, Elliot. Ooh. Thank you. Wow. And, and the reason I do bring is us that it's because it's so hard to find good players now. That good too. You're going. We're going to another team. Thirty-two, and also, um, you know, like the owners, like there's there's more analytics people uh, who are starting to work for teams, and they believe in it because they say, look, if if like if you there's a lot of studies on the draft and they're actually pretty the odds of those hitting yes and basically in the nhl draft takes a huge drop after pick number two i thought you were gonna say seven no two historically the draft goes like this one two look at all the threes three. recently where you're like fuck yes like you you would be sh if you actually sat I'm down and, and I'm went through my legs crossed <laughs> If you, the best like number picture. five pick overall, yeah. that's yeah. right. <laughs> so, like, there are a lot of people who say that it's worth doing it. Um, you know, I had some people who said to me, like, you know, if the Shea Weber one got matched, every single one is getting matched. But I'll tell you this: the Toronto Maple Leafs a hundred percent believed that if Austin Matthews got to July first last year. Uh, Arizona was going to offer sheet him seven years the max. Would have made sense. And I've looked at it, and people in, around the league have told me they believe that to be the case. Columbus wanted to offer sheet Mitch Marner, but he wouldn't sign for seven years. He wanted to do three or four. So that's, Columbus that's, said, "That's ballsy." Yeah, yes. Columbus said, "No, we're not. We're not doing that." We're all in it. How about the in. fucking so, uh, stones on the Coyotes, baby? Yeah, like they, oh my god! They were. They Tell were, me more. They, they were going to do the playoffs. Space. Tell me more, Elliot. I, I nobody has said to me that's false. I think the least believed it. 
I think the Coyotes were going to do it, and I think the league knew it. So, you know, the attitude is moving. The one thing that's an interesting thing about, the whole thing that fascinates me about Barzal is, everybody always says, if Lou Lamorella was still the GM in Toronto, Toronto's negotiations wouldn't have played out that way. I would completely agree. Four, thought, four forwards wouldn't I be making 40. I thought they were a little soft. Okay. I thought they caved in. So we're going to find out what's going to happen here, right? If it gets to He's getting it tested. July 1st. Yeah. No, because number one, is Barzell unhappy at all? Okay, oh, so I, 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 I wouldn't say that. I don't is, know. Is, but. is you have this... You have this very unique talent and a kid who thrives for offense. He gets joy out of, of, of getting points, right? Mm-hmm. And who doesn't? there's other organizations where they value it the same way he does, whereas like they're willing to like let it ride. And Tampa, for instance, they clearly play a different pace and open things up a little bit more than some teams do, mm-hmm. right? He wants to go there and, 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 and be free. That's my opinion. Mm-hmm. Now, Trotz coaches a certain way. It didn't work for a long time. He ends up turning that group around in Washington. Now his theory has been proved right. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, he's going to be stubborn in the way he coaches his team because it's worked before. He's won a championship. Mm-hmm. But he also had... And also, look how much they improved last year when nobody thought they were going to be there. Yeah. Nobody thought they were going around two last year. No. And yeah. they're redoing right. it. I didn't think they'd redo it this year. Mm-hmm. But... But it's hard because now you're this kid's like, well, you guys are getting team friendly. Like they're they're pretty, they don't pay very high, right? Well, they got you know what? I don't know if I agree with that, but they got good deals. Like Nelson's is a good deal, sure. You know, like uh, right. Lee is a very fair, reasonable fair. deal. Nobody, but nobody's going like Lamorello. Like guys always felt. You know, the one guy who chafed was was Niedermeyer, right? But in in New Jersey, Brodeur could have made a lot more away from New Jersey. Yeah. Like a lot of guys could have. I just can't see why a guy is going to be like, okay, I'm putting up less points because of a system that I'm being forced to play where it doesn't truly make me happy as a hockey player. And then now that's going to be used against me to not make more money. Ouchie. I, th- I don't know if that'll be used Am against... Wrong? You know, Biz, I don't know if that'll be used against him to make less money. I, I think what's going to happen is knowing Lou Lamorello, he's going to say to him, we're going to pay you really well, but we're going to do it in a team structure and you're not going to get paid here necessarily what. Okay. And maybe let's well, see, and let's well, see how I'm saying, it. And I'm saying I would not fault him for being like, man, I just want to go somewhere where they're going to like me for the way I kind of want to play. Not saying it's the right way. But we'll, so we'll find yeah, out. But, we'll, but find but out. we'll find it's out. It's going to come down to if ki- – <laughs> Kids got to show some balls to hold out, right? Takes a so, lot. So, so you have to have you have to have a lot of belief in yourself. You also have to have your agent being honest with you and what's going on. And even any agent in the world is going to say, at some point, you're going to get it. Don't worry, man. If your team's doing well in a month, two months into the year, and you're 20 years old, you're not going to play a full year. So maybe Lou Lamorello, if he was in Toronto, would have just stood firm and like. What would have happened? I mean, with Matthews, you're saying that's a little different situation. But Marner, I, I, it is weird to see forty million to four guys there yeah. up front. It's it's definitely it's definitely different. Like I calculated the in, in the cap era, uh, which team had the greatest percentage of four players of their cap, and it was Pittsburgh, one of the years sixteen or seventeen, and it was something like thirty five percent. And this would beat it. Toronto. It would. It would beat it. Now, the one thing is there's going to be a cap jump, but it might not be for two more years when right. Seattle gets in and the new US. It'll be pretty deals big, right? The new US TV deals. They're very hopeful. So that might be where Toronto's window even opens more. We'll see. Yeah, because when we had Sid on, he said, you know, taking less doesn't work unless everybody does it. Right. And, we, you know, you look at Boston, their top line, those guys collectively making $19 oh, million so is, yeah, is a joke. And then it's like, I mean, do you think they can actually win with paying four forwards, $40 million? It just doesn't seem like it, you can build around that. Enough. Well, now, and I think they're now realizing that they got fi- to fix Sorry, their blue Shani. line. <laughs> they got to fix their blue line. Yes. Don't worry, Shannon, Shanahan likes your podcast. Uh, we got to ask you about Olympics. My yeah. whole thing is, is... I don't know the number that the Olympics makes from having the NHL players and how much they benefit from it financially. 
do you think that if it's a large number, that part of the holdout should be the fact that the owners should be seeing some of this money considering their their assets are being used in order to go make another organization a lot more money? You know, in Sochi, I always believe it was the Russian government that paid it because they paid the travel and the insurance cost. And it was somewhere around 14 to $16 million. I've always believed that was the Russian government that paid it because they wanted those guys there. Correct. They wanted the hockey players there. In South Korea, they didn't have the same attachment. So they didn't, and the IOC wouldn't give them the money, so they didn't go. That's why they didn't go. I didn't like it, but I understood it. I, I, I didn't like that they didn't go, but I understood. The NHL and the players should not lose money to go to the no, Olympics. It's a joke. I, no. I don't like it, but I understand it. First of all, they have to go to China because they got to get into China. But number two, now the IOC has said, we're going to take care of this. I think what they realized is that their hockey tournament wasn't as good. Um, the Germany getting to the final is a great story, but it's not a TV draw. No. And NBC it wa- seemed just a little second. Right? NBC God, everybody loves Germany. Wants <laughs> the best players the there. <laughs> NBC <laughs> wants the best players there. They want the best teams there. Look, if if the IOC steps up and says we're going to pay the money's going to get done. There's no way the league, like the league knows they will face an avalanche of criticism if they don't go after these costs yes. are paid for. It yes. won't be good for them. They're going to go. Happen. They're going to go, I think. We'll grind our way there, but it's going to happen. All right. Yeah, it feels like, I mean, the dream team back 92 NBA, that was such a huge leap for them. And it feels like if the NHL could get something like that, because it, it feels like it's just on that cusp of being to that next level. And it, we just can't get there. They, they like it RA in North America. Like if it Salt Lake, 100 percent Vancouver, 100 percent. They're not crazy about it elsewhere. But you know what? It's time like this might be the only time you can get Crosby and McDavid against yeah. Matthews and Kane. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. have That's, to have uh, it. Absolutely. You have to have it. Ovechkin, now that one last ride against these guys. Like, you, you yeah, have. Yeah, because he's never gotten Olympic gold. He's yeah. got his cup. Yeah, yeah. Ovechkin, Malkin, Crosby, McDavid, Matthews, Kane. Yeah, talking the potential I agree. for the greatest it is tournament time. ever. You yeah. have to do it. Yeah. All right, wow. Jesus wow. Christ, Elliot. Yossi, Christ, Timo we'll Meyer. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey we'll think pay about for the Switzerland. Don't, don't come hey, out of the I, I, I can't wait to get... This. I, I better be invited to the Pink Whitney Suite in Beijing. I got yeah. it better. <laughs> <laughs> imagine. Can you imagine? I'll hey, just be getting massaged down. Nobody can afford down. them in Ontario, Ryan. Like, you guys are gouging us No, no, they're coming here. April April 1st. April 1st. No, not an April bottle. Fool's Day. Well, Elliot, this is awesome, man. And and everyone, check out not only your column, 31 Thoughts Weekly, but also you and Jeff Merrick's podcast, same thing, 31 yep. Thoughts. Yep. Yep. So uh, that's great. You, you do some great work, and we really appreciate you coming on and sharing some of those stories with us. Well, I appreciate you guys having me. Thanks a lot. Thanks. I mean, it's been an honor. You know, guys, like you should be proud. You've done an incredible, you built something from nothing. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed that interview. And once again, thank you to Bud Light and Bud Light Seltzer for their support of Spit and Chicklets and the ECHL Player Relief Fund. I've mentioned it times before. Go check out the social media, the ECHL and or Spit and Chicklets to find the GoFundMe that's directly linked to the ECHL Player Relief Fund if you care to help out. Thank you guys for watching.